So we're at the uh, Security Engineering Group at Microsoft. And uh, for about the last eight years, Microsoft has really been pushing security. And one of the things that we've done recently is come up with some process templates for Visual Studio Team System. And we're going to talk to uh, Jeremy Dahlman about this. And follow me. Hey. Jeremy. Hey. How you doing? Good. Good to see you. So uh, tell us a little bit about your, uh, your group. Uh, what do you do here? So the group I'm a part of is the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle Team. And um, the SDL has been here at Microsoft for a number of years, about seven or eight years now. Mm -hmm. And it's specifically the methodology we use at Microsoft to write more secure code. Now the part of the team that I'm on is working on taking the SDL and our methods for, use, or for writing more secure code outside of Microsoft. So I work on different ways that we can offer the SDL to the s software ecosystem mm -hmm. at large and help them write their code more securely as well. So uh, these are, uh, this is a process template. Yes. So explain a little bit more about that. So this is a process template for Visual Studio Team System. Visual Studio Team System kind of gives you a life cycle wide set of tools to help you um, not just write your code within Visual Studio, but allow you to manage your project, um, provide document libraries, SharePoint integration, um, test suites. It's broken down into a number of SKUs from architects to developers to testers, that kind of a thing. What a process template does is it kind of overlays your Visual Studio team project with a set of requirements or pre-populated um, bugs that apply to the specific style of software that you're writing. So it could be for an Agile methodology. This template is for um, um, writing more secure code. It uses secure development methodologies and policies and puts them, injects them into your Visual Studio project. So can we take a look here and see, uh, yeah, sure. see what this looks like? Yeah. So um, it's all out here on the SDL website. I happen to have this up here. Um, you can download this. It's free. OK. It's a big word. Nice. Free. free process template you can download into your Visual Studio team system. You go here, you download the process, this is, it's an MSI, you download it and you upload it into your team system project, and um, what you come to is this. So once you actually open up your new team project, your SDL project, um, this is the front page. This is called the process guidance page, kind of gives you an overview. We tried to give this uh, enough information to get you started. What type of documents do you need to go through? How, how can you customize the template for your project? How can you add your tools, your existing security tools, into this process to enhance it and make it even better? Mm -hmm. So once you get onto this page, um, you can go here to the project portal. That takes you to a SharePoint site that's already customized as kind of a security dashboard. has all the library of documents that we've included here to help you um, understand and work through writing more secure code. And um, then one of the first things you do is you jump out here and you click on this All SDL Tasks Query. And the nice thing here is that rather than having a book um, or having a document, paper document, that describes the SDL mm -hmm. to you, and then you have to kind of go figure out how to implement it, yeah. we've actually just taken all of those requirements and recommendations and made them work items, nice. one by one, ready for you to go. So it's a process that people will go through, and, uh, and everything's covered there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you, these are just ready to assign. Um, and you can go through and decide which ones apply to your project, which ones don't. Um, and it, it eases the adoption of the SDL, mm -hmm. which is probably our key objective here, yeah. is trying to make it easy for you to write more secure code. Um, this goes through you know, all the SDL phases, requirements, design, um, implementation, which is when you code your bugs, the types of requirements that you're going to be, the types of requirements you're going to have to think through to make sure that you're writing more secure code. Now, one of the common things that happens here is that your environment or a software environment outside of Microsoft has some unique security requirements. So we provide a new SDL task for them so they can actually go in and add their own tasks to that master list. Right. So it's kind of customizable for your specific needs. Now, this, now Channel 9 is for developers, so Absolutely. I have to show the developer benefit here. Yeah. Um, one of the first things that we thought about was uh, the cornerstone of the SDL in a lot of ways is to reduce some of the common vulnerabilities we see out there. Probably one of the most common vulnerabilities over the last few years is buffer overflows. Yeah. Um, common flaws that developers make in their code, they don't mean to. Yeah. Um, but they're there. Now there's compiler and linker flags 
within Visual Studio that can be set to catch some of those vulnerabilities. Now, those aren't enabled by default in Visual Studio, but since this is a security template, we kind of want to enable those. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we provide an easy way up here in the what's called the Team Project Settings Source Control. Um, you can actually go in and set check-in policies. We added some SDL-specific check-in policies to the team to the process template here, so that when you set these it basically goes and checks and verifies that the developer has set these flags before they check in their code. Yeah. So I'll only show you a little bit how that might look. So I have some code here, I'm getting ready to check it in. Um, I'm in my solution, so I go in here and I click check in. So as I click check in here, I look, here's my source file, oh, some policy warnings. Right here, it tells me, I didn't set the compiler flag for WE4996 or for safe SCH. Now what I can do here is I can go back and um, fix my code, set those flags, and then when I come in to check in, those policy warnings won't be there, and I can proceed with the check-in. Now, even if the developer decides to override and not make those changes, yeah. the team system has some cool mechanics in there so that the development managers and the project managers can be alerted mm -hmm. to the fact that this set of code didn't have the check-in policies in place. Yeah. So there's some checks and balances there even as well. Now. One of those check-in policies is a security code review. Now, a security code review is something within the SDL that's optional, but it's good. If you have a particularly sensitive piece of code that you think needs a little bit more security attention, yeah. um, we have this thing in here called a security code review where it will require the developer to have someone else review that code from a security perspective before it's allowed to be checked in. Yeah. Now, how you do that is you go in, you use this specific work item, you title it, you attach your shelf set to the bug and assign it to the person doing the code review. When this is resolved and they're done with the code review, then and only then are you able to check in that chunk of code. Great. So some nice protection points there yeah. to make sure code that's sensitive for security is written securely. Now once you actually check these in, the compiler linker flags will do their work. When you go build your project, the flags will do their job. They'll detect if you've written some insecure code and it'll pop a bug um, off to, um, it'll create a new bug, or the tester can then take that and create a new bug back off to the developer. What we try to do here with the new bug, a common work item in Visual Studio Team System doesn't have this, but we've added a security field. So now, you know, you'll be able to assign it to the um, implementation, you can assign it to Renee, and then for security here, you can actually identify what the type of security issue is that you encountered. Say it's a buffer overflow you can designate the security as critical or important. Um, you can identify the effect that that vulnerability is likely to have on your product through our stride categorization here. Let's say that this is going to lead to you know, information disclosure, and then you can determine if this bug is a blocking or a non-blocking bug based on the security criteria for mm -hmm. your project. Testers love this because it allows them to specifically identify that a bug is a security bug. Yeah. And you can track that differently than your other bugs, mm -hmm. and uh, especially if you're security-centric or security-focused when you're writing your code. Yeah. Another cool field here is this origin field. This is kind of a neat field because you can actually associate your specific tool here. And I talked a little bit about tool integration up front. Let's say you're using the SDL threat modeling tool. And um, the SDL threat modeling tool has been integrated with the process template. I'll go here. This is my threat model then um, you know, I'm ready to analyze my threat model. So I'll open up one of these elements that I identified. This one could lead to a denial of service. So if I open this up and I triage it, I can work through. Um, uh, I can say, you know, here's the impact that's going to have on my product. You know, here's the solution I have. And then when I click File Bug here, it automatically throws a bug directly in using Team Foundation Server, nice. which sits in Visual Studio Team System, and populates a bug automatically into my set of um, into my bug database for my team project. So with tool integration, you get a lot of cool things. And when that bug is created, it'll actually populate this origin field with the word threat modeling tool. So then when you run your queries, and say we're looking at all of our active bugs here, here's a security issue that didn't come from the threat modeling tool. However, if I look at this one, see right here, origin threat model cause other to denial of service critical bug it's blocking so this is another this is what a threat modeling tool would look like then with all the details that I filled in here in the description field kind of a neat feature so you can imagine other tool in 